بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد All praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, we thank him, and we beg his guidance and his forgiveness. We beg his guidance and his forgiveness, and we seek refuge with him from the evil of our own souls, our egos, and from the evil consequences of our actions. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there are none who can lead him astray. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray, there are none who can guide him. And I bear witness in front of everyone here that there is no God. There is no God who is truly worthy of worship except Allah alone and without partners. And I further testify that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his servant and his final messenger. O you who believe, fear your Lord the fear that he is deserving of you. And do not dare die except in a state of submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by that it is meant as Muslims. O oh, humanity, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, from our father Adam. And from that single soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his mate, our mother Eve or Hawa. And from them both, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala populated the earth with many men and women. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through whom you ask your mutual rights. And always uphold the ties of family. Always uphold the ties of kinship. Because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-raqib. He is always watching over you and I. O oh, you who believe, fear your Lord, the fear that he is deserving of you, and speak a straightforward word. Always speak the truth. Perhaps that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repair what you have messed up. And perhaps that he may forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger have achieved the greatest success that you could ever achieve in this life. And no doubt, the most eloquent and the best of speech and the most truthful of speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his book. And the best of guidance is that of our dear and beloved guide, teacher, leader, prophet, and messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are to attempt to introduce something new to the religion of Islam that wasn't already there, revealed by Allah, or upon the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And every time someone tries to do that, it's a religious innovation. And a religious innovation is nothing but misguidance. And misguidance leads to nowhere inevitably except the hellfire. Waba'd, as to what follows. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this verse that when my slaves ask of me, verily I am near. I answer the call of anyone, or excuse me, I answer the call of the one who calls on me. So let them answer my call and believe in me in hopes that they may be guided aright. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he was 
amongst the ummah. And he was amongst his people. People would often come and they would ask him questions. They wouldn't ask him trivial questions, unimportant questions, irrelevant questions. They would ask him the questions about the most important things. And from the most important things that they asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And they would ask about him a lot. Those things that please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. How could they get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? What actions please him so that they can perfect those deeds? Again, getting closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And when they would ask like this, as is often, that when a problem or an issue or people came asking the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as is often, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would reveal verses. And this is one of those instances when a group, they came asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about Allah Azza wa Jal, the most important thing that we could ever ask about. The most important thing that we could ever learn about and understand. Our Creator, when they asked him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down verses answering their question. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ In this, this beautiful verse from Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 186, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the first thing that he says is when my slaves ask of me. And bi-ithnillah ta'ala, I want to share a few points of discussion or of benefit from this verse. The first thing I said is what that the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and when my slaves ask of me. Now, Allah, what I want to focus on here is the choice of words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in, these, in this verse. They're not haphazard, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is Al-Hakim. He is the most wise. And His speech is the best of speech. And so whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses words, it's for a deep wisdom. And here He says, When my slaves ask of me. Now He could have said, وَلَوْ سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And if my slaves ask of me. Now if he said if, what would that imply? That would imply, and if they come and ask about me, that's good. And if they don't ask about me, whatever. It doesn't matter. But Allah doesn't say if they come and ask of me. He says, وَإِذَا and when. And when they come and ask of me. Do you know what that means, brothers and sisters? What Allah is trying to say in a subtle way, that he is waiting for you. That he is waiting for his servants to come and ask about him. And what are you and I except the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah is telling us here that he's waiting for you, brother, to come and ask about him. That he's waiting for you, sister, to come and ask about your, his rights. To ask, brothers and sisters, about our rights from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about his most beautiful names. Who really is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are his names? And what are the beautiful facets of his character, his attributes? Allah is waiting in anticipation, and when my slaves come and ask, my servants come and ask of me. That is encapsulated when Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, and again, I'm focusing on just the words right now. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, and when my slaves ask of me, or when my servants ask of me. Now often when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to Himself in the Qur'an, He uses what is called in English, it's called the royal we. So normally you might hear him say in the Qur'an, when my slaves ask of us. He refers to himself in the plural, meaning many, but not because he's many, but it's the way that kings and queens and people of status and royalty in the past, they used to refer to themselves in this way. 
But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't do that. Even though He does that in many other places in the Quran, in this instance, when He says, when my slaves ask of me, and I'm anxiously anticipating and waiting for my servants to ask of me, He says, I am near. Or excuse me, that uh, when they ask of me, even in the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is choosing, He's showing a type of nearness and a closeness. That instead of saying us, he says me when my servants ask of me. And then the next thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, and when my slaves ask of me, then verily I am near. So I said the first part of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing who? That he's addressing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That it's a conversation between him and that, and, uh, between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And often, whenever the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, either answering to a problem or an issue or questions, Allah usually says, and when they ask you, tell them, O Muhammad. And there are many examples in the Quran. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيضِ, عن المحيض قُلْ هُوَ أَذَا فَاعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءِ And when they come asking about the menses of women, then tell them it is harmful and do not go near your women during that time. Yani meaning don't have intercourse with them or have intimate relations with them. But he says what? قُلْ Tell them Muhammad, tell them to say such and such and such and such. Another example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسَرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعٌ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا He says, and when they ask you about alcohol, about drinking and gambling, قُلْ Say to them that there is good in it and there is harm in it. But the harm is outweighs the benefit. But the point here is what he says, قُلْ Say to them, Muhammad, you tell them. But Allah doesn't do that in this, in this ayah that I'm mentioning here. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي He doesn't do that. He doesn't say, you tell them, Muhammad. Allah answers for himself. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ He says, verily I am near. When my servants ask of me, when they ask of me, when they inquire about me, when they want to know more about me, when they want to get closer to me, I am near, I am close. Allah is telling us here, and he's speaking directly. Before he started out by talking to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but he answers the inquirer. He answers their question directly, and he says, verily I am near, I'm close. Don't answer Muhammad, I will answer directly myself. Do you see that brothers and sisters? Allah says, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close. So even the words that Allah is choosing and the way that He is speaking, He is telling us that He wants to be close to us, that He wants to be near to us. And this is something that is a beautiful and deep-rooted value and teaching in Islam. It is one of the unique characteristics and teachings of Islam, is that we have a, Allah wants from us and there is a direct connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other religions, there is a barrier. There is something that has to connect you to your creator. But in Islam, in the best way of life, it teaches us that you can go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. You don't need an intermediary. You don't need someone to die for your sins to reach the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't need to go to someone else to make, dua, to do, make dua for you on your behalf. All you have to do is raise your hands, ayyuhal ikhwa. All you have to do is raise your hands, ayyuhal akhawat, and call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's already expressing in this verse that he's waiting for you to do so. Because this is something that is extremely important. We have to understand this, brothers and sisters. That there is no intermediary between us and the mercy of Allah. Why is this important? Because all of us have mistakes. All of us have shortcomings. Myself, you, the biggest imam, the sister who has the niqab, the hafiz al-Qur'an, the one who's smoking, the one who's at the... All of us, no matter what your status, no matter what your situation, كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذا الحديث ما يخلو من المقال لكن 
قال كل بني آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said all of the sons of Adam, which of course means the daughters of Adam as well, that all of us have mistakes. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَّاءٍ Day and night we make mistakes, brothers and sisters. We have shortcomings. We get angry. We made a mistake. We were late. We were too early. We forgot. So many things. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes on to say, وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ تَوَابُونَ But out of all of the sons and daughters of Adams that all have mistakes, the best out of them are the ones who are ever repentful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are always going back to Allah azza wa jal, making tawbah to him, begging him for his forgiveness. Think about it like this. If you fall down, which you inevitably will, all of us do, the important thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not that you fall down. You're already going to fall down. The important thing to Allah is that you keep getting up. That's the important thing to Allah, is that you keep getting up, you brush yourself off, dust yourself off, and you keep moving forward. You keep your eyes on the prize. And what is the ultimate prize? The pleasure of Allah, the Jannah to Firdaus al-A'la, being close to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, jinking from the hood, the afterlife, that's the prize. You keep your eyes on the prize and you keep getting up no matter how many times you fall down until you finish. And the way to do that, ayyuhal ikhwa al akhawat is that you are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first step to that is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking of Him. And an important thing that I want to mention about making dua, about making dua, something extremely, extremely important, ayyuhal ikhwa wal akhawat, something that is missed very often, is the understanding that we have to have when you are making dua. For some of us, we think that you just raise your hands and you say some duas. And it just, Allah, I know what it becomes. Or some of you are sitting down in the masjid and for a while and just, Astaghfirullah, 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 and until you don't even know what's being said. It has to be a conversation between you and your Creator. You have to know what you are saying when you are saying that, those du'as. When you say, Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasana, you say, Oh, our Lord, Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasana. Give us the best of this life. See, it's not haram to ask for good things in this world. It's not, it's not bad to ask for that. Wa fil akhirati hasana. And give us the best of the next life too. So you can't forget the afterlife. That is the most important thing. Wa qina adhab nar And protect us from the hellfire. But what meaning does that have if you don't know what you're saying when you say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa And you don't know what you're saying. You have to know the meaning of what you're saying and it has to be a conversation between you, a communication between you and your creator. The second thing, if you don't speak Arabic, if you don't know Arabic, what should you do? Then you, have, you need to say it in English. There is nothing wrong with you saying a dua, calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the language that you understand. If it happens to be Oromo, then go ahead. If it happens to be in Somali, then go ahead. If it's in Urdu, if it's in Patwa, if whatever it might be, whatever language you speak, then you have to say it so that you understand what you're saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not get me wrong. The best dua that you can say is al-ad'iyya al-ma'thura. Yani ma warada fil Qur'ani wa sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the best dua that you can possibly make. Whatever Allah said. And whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that's the best dua that you can make. But tayyib, <coughs> there are so many and you don't know all of them, but you have to have an open line of communication with you and Allah Azza wa Jal. Your heart has to be in it. And your heart can't be in it unless you understand what you're saying. So the second thing I said is what? Is that you have to understand, or excuse me, say it in the language that you understand. Because it has to be a conversation between you and your creator. The next thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an. We said that the first part that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when my slaves or my servants ask of me, and then he answers himself by saying, and verily I am near, I'm close. If they ask of me, or when they ask of me, I'm verily, I'm close, I'm near, I'm waiting for you. 
أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان. And this, brothers and sisters, is another beautiful point that, uh, that I want to share with you from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, I answer the call of the caller whenever they call on me. Whenever they call on me. Whenever they call on me, I will answer. Immediately. And this is something that is important for us to understand. Because for some of us, we think you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will answer the dua of the imam. And you see it all the time. People go to somebody who has a big beard, or has a, and they say, brother, please make dua for me. So we do, make dua for me, inshallah. I'm sick or whatever. My grandmother, she passed away, make dua for her. Brother, I need money or sister, I need, yeah, I need a job. Or make dua for me. Because they think what? Many of times they think they're not good enough and that Allah is not going to answer their dua. So they want to ask someone else to make dua for them. Or they think that they're not good enough, so Allah, He will answer the dua of the Imam and the Shaykh and the half of the Quran, the one who memorized the Quran, the sister who has the big burqa and she, she is fully covered, etc. They think that. But Allah is telling you, I will answer the dua. He didn't, qual he didn't say the righteous caller. He didn't say the good caller. He didn't say the caller who memorized the Quran. He said just the caller. That means any one of us here can qualify. Anybody sitting in this musalla, you qualify, brother. All you have to do, ida da'an. He will answer your call when? If you call on him. We can never think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't answer our call. And like I said earlier, some of us, we've messed up and we think that, Wallahi, brother, you don't know the stuff that I've done in my past. I don't think Allah is going to answer my call. I done done some stuff. Or I done done some things. Or I have skeletons in my closet. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us in, on his prophetic tongue. He or, Allah already knows that you have mistakes. But Allah is waiting for you to do what? To come to him. And this is the important point from this part of the ayah. When you call on him. And how befitting is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the master. He's our creator and is our sustainer. He already initiated and tells us that he's waiting for us. But isn't it out of adab, out of respect? Isn't it the proper character? Isn't it our place that we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of waiting for him to come to us? Isn't that the proper etiquette in the, the way for a servant with their master? We have to wait for him to call us? No, it should be us that are racing to him and begging him and asking him and learning about him and getting to know him. And he's already extended to us that he's waiting. But إِذَا دَعَانَ He's waiting for you to call on him. 24-7, 365 days out of the year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you to call on him. But the point here is what? You have to call on him. I have to go to him. We are the servants. We don't make the master come to us. We have to go to him. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أستغفره إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I say what I say first and foremost for myself and then for all of you. I beg Allah subhanahu wa taala His forgiveness and repent to Him and I exhort all of you and encourage all of you to do the same because indeed He is the oft forgiving and the especially merciful. الحمد لله وحده وكفى وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the especially merciful, we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon our dear and beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, upon his family, his, his pure family, his good companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the last day. Now I want you brothers and sisters to imagine that you have a company, big company, or CEO, and you're the CEO of a big company. You got 500 employees. So you 500 employees. And you're coming into your company, this big old building, and you go in there, and when you're walking into your office, you got your briefcase, you got your coffee, and you're going in there, and secretary, one of the many secretaries that work there, says something to you, hey, how's it going? And you keep going, and you go to your office. And like a couple of days later, they send you an email. They send you an email. 
and you have 500 employees, do you think you're going to remember that one secretary out of all the employees, out of all the responsibilities you have of this big company with all of the things that are going on and all of the things that you have to take care of and all of the meetings that you have to do? I don't think so. I don't think so that we remember. And I think all of you would agree with me that more than likely, that person wouldn't be remembered. But if we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we think about Allah azza wa jal, who is more important than him? Who is more busy and has more responsibilities than him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking care of the entire universe and everything that is going on. He's making sure that the oxygen in the air is just right for you and me to breathe. He's making sure that, that it gets cold, but it doesn't get so cold that you can't live on earth. It's just cold enough for us to have to adapt, to figure out what we got to do. We got to put on our clothes, got to make sure we wear our hats, blah, blah, blah. But it's enough for you to still, it's bearable, it's livable. Life can still go on. He, makes it, he takes care of the fact how close the sun is, the stars, the location of the planets, the precipitation on the earth when it rains, when it doesn't, when there's drought, when there's not. All of these things, he's taking care of it. The, the organs in your body, making sure that they keep functioning, making sure that the blood keeps pumping, making sure that your eyes are still working, that your ears, that you're listening to this khutbah with, Allah could take that way at any time. And he's taking care of all of this, what, seven, some uh, odd billion people on the face of the earth. And in spite of that, in spite of all of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you to call and you are not some anonymous caller to him. Allah knows you by name. When you call on him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he, he mentions you by name. Allah above the seven heavens, with the angels and the greatest of angels, Jibreel, wa Mikail, Allah mentions you by name. You're not some anonymous person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ Allah is close to you, closer to you than your own jugular vein. He knows what your problems are, brother. He knows what you're going through, sister. He knows what issues you have, whatever you're, you need. Because usually, the more important somebody becomes, the more status they have, it's usually hard to get a request to get a hold of them, right? You want to talk to them, you want to sit down with them, you got to talk to the secretary, make an appointment, send an email, phone call, blah, 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 all these different things. You got to jump through all these hoops. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's waiting for you. All you have to do is call on him. And he knows who you are. And he knows what you're going through. And he wants, and he answers your call immediately. <laughs> But there's something that often happens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say in this verse, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي So let them answer my call. Allah has started out this verse by, in, like I said, by initiating a closeness and saying all you got to do, when you call, I'm close, I'm near. All you got to do is call on me. But he's also telling us, but you have to answer his call. He told us he'll answer our call. Allah promises he will answer his call. And he's not like me. And he's not like you. And he's not like people. You know, people, they make promises. They fall short. They forgot. They missed the appointment. They broke their promise. They had no intention of keeping the promise in the first place when they made it. But Allah doesn't do that. Allah promises he will answer the call. But you have to do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's not asking for much. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي then they have to answer my call. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي Answer my call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ O oh, you who believe. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, whenever Allah says, O oh, you who believe, فَرَعَ سَمْعَكْ Pay attention closely. O oh, you who believe. Answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Answer the call of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever they call on you, to what brings you life. 
Answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stay away from his prohibitions and that will bring you life. That's all you have to do. If you do this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer you. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي And he's not asking us for much, brothers and sisters. Just the, I'll give you one example of how he's not asking us for a lot. Many of you, you've heard, or if, all of, if not all of you, know about the story of the Isra' wal Mi'raj. The night journey when the Prophet ﷺ traveled from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem in a single night. And the Mi'raj, when he ascended, when he went up to the heavens to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And out of all of the happenings that went on in that story, or in that, excuse me, occurrence in history, one of the things that happened is that the salah was legislated. The salat was legislated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave a certain number for the salah that they have to pray this many times in the prayer, uh, excuse me, in a day. And the Prophet sallallahu he took this command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was leaving. And Musa alayhi salam went to him and he said, look it, or listen, my brother, I've already dealt with the, <clears throat> the hard-headed people of uh, the children of Israel. They're not going to be able to handle it. Go back to Allah, ask Allah to lighten the load. They're not, they not going to handle it. I know. My, and that the, Musa alayhi salam, he, out of all of the prophets, he's the closest to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. In description, in what they had to deal with, and their people, they are the closest. And he said, I know. I know, I, know how they can be. I know how people can be. When you give them commands, you tell them do this, you tell them do that. Go back to Allah. And so he did. It started out, it went from so many salawat to 50, then a little bit less, then a little bit less. Until finally the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he keeps going back to Musa. Musa saying, I'm telling you, listen, I know, I have experience. You're just starting out. I've already dealt with the children of Israel. I'm telling you, go back to Allah. And he kept doing this until, the Prophet, or until Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made it only five. Five salawat. But it started out as what? It started out as 50. But the generosity of Allah, the mercy of Allah, the kindness of Allah, the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us, for his creation, we still get the reward of 50. But he's only asking you to do five times a day. He's not asking for much. You fast in Ramadan. Do you have to fast all day? For the entire day? No, you don't have to. Just what? From the fajr, from the dawn, until when? Until the sunset. Bas. For one month. That's it. Not the whole year. Not until you die. Wallahi, there are some religions on the face of the earth. Wallahi, they have fasting until you die. There's a religion called Jainism in India. Wallahi, akhi, they fast until they die. When they take an oath to fast. Our religion, Allah, he made it so easy. Just answer his call. Wali bi, And to believe in him. Now we might be thinking, why does Allah say, if he's already telling us to call on him, obviously someone who's calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believe in him already. You would think this. Why would he say, well, you mean be, and also believe in me? Because you know, when you make dua, many of us, when we make dua, and we did it one time, we did it five times, we did it six times, like, and there's no answer, we say, khalas, Allah is not going to answer my call. Already I tried, already I called. He didn't answer. And then they stop making dua. They say, Allah, Allah can't answer my dua. But it's not like this. Allah is telling us that you have to keep the faith. Keep making dua, keep those lines of communication open with Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, sometimes when he used to make dua, he used to stand up in the middle of the night praying and crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much so, till his feet used to bleed. In the battle of Badr, when he was making dua, on the eve of the battle, before, it cut, before everything started off, he was making dua to Allah, begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him victory. He's the messenger, he's the Prophet. And he's still begging Allah, asking Allah, so, and he's sitting there until Abu Bakr al-Siddiq came to him. He said, enough. You've made enough dua. It's enough. Allah is not going to not respond to your call. He will answer. And the Prophet said, so like, no. And he keeps making dua. And that's why Allah is telling us, don't ever despair. Don't ever think that Allah is not going to answer your dua. But it is your place as a servant. It is my place as a servant that we keep begging Allah and we keep begging and asking of Him. 
When we, act, when we understand that, when we remember that, when there's a connection in our heart to Allah, that I'm coming to you, Allah, and you're crying, and you're feeling like it's hopeless, and you have nobody else to answer, then your heart is truly attached to Allah. When you're thinking nobody else can answer except who? Nobody can answer me. Nobody, nobody can help Philistine. Nobody. No matter what we do, no matter how much we amass, until our hearts get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us can truly affect change in Ethiopia, in Oromia, until our hearts are not connected with people, not connected with weapons, not connected with money, not connected with political status, and so on and so forth. All these means of the dunya, they're there. We use them, and we have to use them. But our hearts have to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when we have money, we know that that money is only going to benefit if Allah says so. And then when we're sick and we take medicine, that we know that only the cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When your heart has that kind of connection with Allah, because you're constantly making dua to Him, constantly being connected to Him, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua. That's what He wants from you. For you to recognize that in reality you have nobody else except Him. Yes, we have brothers that we ask for assistance, that help us out, but in the end, even a brother, who's the one who created the brother to help you out? That's why I said even the money. Yes, it's a means, you use it, but who made it and put it there for you? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we have to remember, brothers and sisters. And if they do that, or excuse me, and when people do that, these are the people that they are guided aright. This is the way and the path to be guided aright. Perhaps in hopes that they will be guided aright. When you have a connection with Allah like that, when you're conversating with Him, not once in a while, not sometimes, the Prophet ﷺ, he said he used to make dua, excuse me, make istighfar and tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 70 marra fil yawm. 70 marra, 70 times a day. Wa fi ba'd riwayat, 100 marra, 100 times. You almost imagine and think to yourself, it seems that Allah, the Prophet ﷺ is constantly making dua to Allah, constantly making tawbah to Him, constantly. When did he ever live his life and do anything else? That's what it would seem like. But he was constantly in conversation, and this is how we have to be, is going back to Allah, constantly having that conversation with Him and opening that communication with Him. And when we do that, we cannot give up hope. We have to keep doing it, and then not only that, we have to understand. Know what you're saying when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, this, is my, this is my thesis, this is what I want you to understand, is that constantly have communication with Allah, to never give up hope and to constantly, or to be, never give up hope and to understand what you're saying to Allah, and that it's something that it's a part of your life, that it's something that you're always doing, that you're always remembering Him. And not only, when you do that, when you do that, ayyuha al al akhawat, and I will finish here, inshallah, the Prophet ﷺ, he said something beautiful, something so beautiful. And he was just teaching one of the young Sahaba, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh. He said to him, Ya Ghulam, u'allimuka kalimat. And one of the things he said to him, he said, Ta'arraf ila Allah fil rakha' ya'arifka fi shiddah. Ta'arraf ila Allah fil rakha' in the good times, remember Allah. Make dua to Allah. Pray to Allah. In the good times, when there's money in your pocket and the bills are paid and everything's good between you and your wife and the kids, mashallah, they're so beautiful and they listen in and they, everything is happy and everything's good. Remember Allah in those times. Ya He will know you when times get difficult, when the money is short, when things are difficult, when you're being oppressed, when someone's not giving you your rights. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond. But if because of what? Because of that constant communication and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibadullah, sallu wa sallimu ala Muhammad ibn Abdullah kama amarakum Allah fi kitabih inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima wa kathalika qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man salla alayya salatan sallallahu biha ashara that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever whoever sends peace and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send by that one salah he will send ten on that person Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wallahumma arda Allahumma Allahumma arda ana sahabati ajma'in wa Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali wa ana sahabati ajma'in 
ومع 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 ونحن معهم بمنك وكرمك وإحسانك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها وأنت وليها ومولاها ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب Oh Allah, show us the truth for what it is and give us the strength, the courage, and the sincerity to follow it. And we ask you, oh Allah, to, give us, uh, to show us falsehood for what it is and to give us the strength, the courage, and the sincerity to stay away from it.